Welcome back. So now that we have the actual module available, let's create our first component for this module that we just created. So we'll do another ng generate right here. Let's just clean out the log ng generate. We'll do c for component to say I want to generate a component right here. And now you have to explain what feature do you want to put the component into or what folder do you want to put the component into. And in this case, I wanted to go into the products folder right here. That's the component where I want to put it into. And um, let's just call it product list right here to kind of explain that it's different than the actual products folder right here. So it, you could just have called the component for products if you want to, but it's just for me to kind of specify and explain to you that this is going to be the component itself and this is just going to be the folder or module where it belongs to. So that's all we had to do. Now let's try and execute the code and you'll notice that now it actually puts that component, creates a lot of files for us and also modifies that products module TS file right here. If we go into that first, you'll see that it just added a products list component right here for us out of the box very simple now we have that declare so we can use it in our system and uh, if you get that red squiggly line just try and refresh it sometimes it, it kind of re needs to recompile or something i don't know but now it's gone there's no errors at all go back to the product list right here and this is where our product list component is and that's where we're going to show our get all feature inside this guy right here now let's talk a little bit about what's actually in here we have a ts file which is again the file that's going to focus on all the TypeScript in our code. But this is also like the, the main file for our component, meaning that this file is where we can put in the component um, annotation right here to explain this is a component. We also explain we have a selector right here, meaning that this is our selector if we wanna use this component anywhere manually. I'll talk about subcomponents later on, but for now let's just keep it like this. Um, this is just a name that's unique for this component right here. And then we have a template URL which explains where we can use or put in HTML for our code because we have two-way binding between the HTML and the TypeScript. Again, we'll get back to that later. And this is where we can find the styling for our component. So all of this information right here explains our actual how the component is being rendered or shown. So here we would put all all our JavaScript, or in our case, TypeScript code, that's going to do the dynamic stuff. Here we're going to put in the structure of the component where we're going to put in all our tags uh, in our system. And this is where we're going to put in all our styling, our layout information is going to be put inside this file right here, the styling file. Now we also have a spec file, and that's for unit testing. Now, I'm not going to do the front end test driven this time because I need to proceed a little bit for my students so I can't do everything test driven right now I'm sorry but I'll get back later and show you how we can do test driven development with an actual spec file like this but for now I'm just not going to do it I don't have the time for it to be honest so I'll come back with an example on how we can do this test driven later on. For now, let's end it right there. We have a product list component and you know a little bit about what it's all about now, this component. We need to also use it because right now it just says product list works. Uh, let's try and see how we can get that onto the screen when we go to the slash products, right? Because there's still nothing right here on the products. It's just a blank page. So what we can do is we can go into our products routing this time, the products routing module. And then what we can do is we can open up the routes right here and we can add our first route. I'll do curly brackets like before, like this, and then we'll make a new path right here. And this time the path will be a blank path, meaning I wanna go to product slash nothing. And when I get to that path, what I wanna do is not load children this time, I just wanna load a component like this, and then I can explain what component I wanna load. And in our case, it's going to be the products list component, the one we just built. So that means that now when I'm going to the path of slash products slash nothing, I'll load this component right here. Again, we start with the app routing right here to load the module itself. And when that module is loaded, we go to the products routing module and say, we don't wanna add anything to that sub route. We just wanna add the actual products itself. And then we'll load this component right here for you. So let's go back to our view right here and you'll see now it says, product list works, meaning that when I go to this route right now, I'll actually load this component right here. And you can even test it by saying, let's put an H1 in here instead and just say products like this to kind of show this is the products page. Save that. Now you'll see that we actually see products right here. When we go to the home, it's gone. When we go to products, it's there. So that's how easy it is to kind of get this route uh, sub feature up and running right here and also how to get the route for this first component right here. So that's it for this lesson. Now you have your first component in the system. Next lesson we're going to start actually adding some real data into that component by adding services, DTOs and stuff like that. So that's it. See you next time. Bye.